Hello guys, I'm here with Sinaren. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, I'm fine, thank you. How do you enjoy your stay so far here? It's good. It's been a good tournament. Uh, we're staying in a nice hotel. The breakfast there is actually really good. Uh, it's very easy to get around, uh, very fast to get taxis. They're, they're cheap. The country in general is pretty cheap. So um, it's like I... It's uh, yeah. It's it's been very easy for us to uh, to to get what we need and, and get around here. Uh, the event has been nice. The audience is great. Um, we've been lucky to have some great games. A very nice tournament so yeah, far. Yeah. So it's been it's been very enjoyable. Uh, did you have a time to go around the city? Uh, not really. Like our our work days are really long. Yeah, yeah so, I know. So the main thing we do is we, we get up like the day the day looks like this. We wake up, uh, get ready for the day, go eat breakfast, then we take a taxi here. We do the event. Uh, maybe after the day we get a little bit of food, or we obviously eat during the event, and then after after that we maybe relax a bit, talk about the day, and then we go back to sleep because like the yeah. days the days are like I, I know what you mean. What fourteen hours every time? Yeah. So. Uh, will you stay here after the event uh, ends so you can go around the city? or you have to, to go to work? Uh, we're traveling back tomorrow, so oh, okay. right after the, the day. I'm not sure when the event is going to end today. It depends on the yeah, grand yeah. finals. Uh, I'm actually not completely sure what we're doing after the grand finals. I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of after party or something Yeah, like I that. heard so, that, uh, uh, that we were an after yeah, party. But so we'll, we probably, we'll probably go there, so we won't get to see that much of the city. That's often how it is with land events, that it's very, like, we get here, we do the event. Sometimes you stay an extra day, but generally you travel back on the next day, so yeah, you don't get yeah. to see that much of this. Have you ever been to DreamHack Bucharest before? No. Bucharest, oh my god. <laughs> I'm mixing I'm mixing up uh, Bulgarian words, sorry for this. So this is your first time here. Mm -hmm. uh, you enjoyed so far. Yeah, I, did. Uh, I like the, uh, actually I want to, like, there's a little bit of a random thing to say, but like, yeah, when, yeah. when we take the taxi ride here, I actually, I really like the, um, the architecture in the city, the way the buildings yeah, look. Yeah. Um, just the, the whole the whole feeling of it it's 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 really great actually it's it seems like a nice city just from an aesthetic standpoint just to be in everything here seems like uh, something massive something built with uh, a lot of attention to the details yeah there yeah, are a lot of uh, sculptures and uh, stuff like this so yeah, yeah I know really I know like what that. you mean I'm really impressed by some of the, the structures uh, by, by the architecture mm -hmm. around here so uh, my next question is this dream hack um, butcher has started in a turbo hale. it mm -hmm. was uh, just like two holes mm -hmm. and pieces uh, over there it was nothing special but right now we're having a huge event with uh, two stages two main stages two big stages uh, in uh, one hole do you think that this is somehow problematic or it's uh, something necessary for the expanding of the scene for the growing of the scene i mean the two stages do they interfere with each other do they uh, like um um, the noise from one stage uh, be, is, is a problem for the other stage or something like this? No, not really. Actually, it's fine. I think the like the sound the sound isolation could be better. Like it's yeah. not perfect, but so it's a, it's an avenue for improvement. But it's actually not it's not bad. Like when we're casting, even if the CSGO casting is going on at the same time, or if there's noise, like we're we're doing our thing. We're focused on that. And uh, I've been sitting in the audience for a lot of the games I haven't cast, where I've just done the analysis before and after the game and been watching there and. It's really no problem. It's it's good. So you you like what they did here in the venue? Yeah, I think it's it's a pretty good setup. Yeah, yeah I think that uh, this is actually better than I expected it to be because when I heard that there will be two big stages uh, in here, I was thinking like they will interfere with each other, there will be problems with this. But so far, I do think that uh, everything's okay. Yeah. So okay, let's uh, let's proceed with uh, more Dota specific questions. Okay. Uh, this year, earlier this year, Valve introduced uh, the major system. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? I think it's good. Um, it's something I've been wanting for quite a long time, actually. Uh, I've one of my main points of criticism as far as the Dota 2 competitive circuit goes is that TI is so big in comparison to everything else that. It's not like the other tournaments don't matter because they obviously do. Like yeah. they, they, in their own right, they're great events. They have, of course, prize money. There's a lot of pride, and there's uh, the qualification into TI. Uh, but I, I like the idea a lot more of having tournaments spread out, uh, like major tournaments spread out throughout the year. TI still looks to be the special one and the outstanding one. Just like I'm basing that on the fact that when Valve announced it, they have like these three cups, and then there's still the ages for TI. So I'm yeah, assuming, yeah, like, the way I'm assuming that is to be interpreted is that the other mages will be big tournaments, but TI is still like the crown jewel. That's like the world championship, right? You know what I was thinking when uh, we saw the trophy of uh, Dota 2 Asia Championship? Mm -hmm. The um, Rapira or something like this? Radiant, the Radiance, Rapier, Radiance? Yeah, yeah, some, something yeah, like yeah. this, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was thinking that 
other tournaments can embrace this idea and uh, something similar like a Voltron, if you mean, you can uh, get the ages from the international, the uh, Divine Rapier or uh, Radiance or whatever from uh, another tournament, maybe a South Kyoras from uh, other tournaments. And then and Mask like of this. Madness. For yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like That's this. So I really like the idea of uh, itemization of the... Uh, the price the team, yeah, is, that's really uh, cool. the team is getting. It's yeah. a great trophy. Um, so what was I going to say? So having more tournaments spread out throughout the year makes for a more stable tournament uh, or a more stable scene. It's not so, like, right now it's very volatile where teams, like, shuffle and take breaks after TI and they completely redo things. And uh, there's going to be some more established transfer windows with, like, uh, so it's uh, there's more emphasis on team structure and staying together. And, of course, like, sometimes changes are necessary and you're yeah, swapping, yeah, swapping out players, but uh, it's going to be more stable. It's going to be easier as a fan to follow like there's going to be more continuity throughout the years like there's like a, a red line that you can like follow oh this is what's how the first master went right now it's like tournaments are like scattered okay you know someone won this event and this event and this event but how does it really play into the big overall like story arc of the year which I think it's a lot easier now if you're let's say you're not a super hardcore Dota fan but you're a Dota fan you love watching the game but you, you don't have time to commit to watching like every LAN or something it's, it's like a good way for you to, to keep track of the scene and still feel like you're like you have an idea of what's going on. Imagine right now you you watch TI, and you you don't watch much for say two months, and you come back and you're like, oh my god, this wait, where are my teams? Like, what, another what, game. What, what just happened? Where are my teams? Uh, what's going on? And then you watch. Like now with these these masters, I think it's going to be easier to like keep track. Uh, it's perhaps also going to be a better system for up and coming players to uh, to be drafted in, so to speak, and to they prove themselves in the other tournaments where the big, really big teams will be focusing a lot more on the masters, and that means like the other tournaments will probably give more space to up and coming teams. But and do then, you think that this will kill these more tournaments because the big teams won't uh, join them, so they can't offer? Uh, I mean, the, the tournament organizers can't offer. Uh, the big numbers uh, to the sponsors uh, because, of course, the big teams won't attend, so they can they cannot uh, attract the viewership like this. I think we saw with uh, so I think for Starlighter 11, the participating teams there were a lot of the top teams that weren't there, I believe, and yeah. the viewership was still actually really good. So if you have like a good brand and you have a good production then as long as you have interesting teams, like, they don't have to be all the best of the best. Of course, like, there's no denying that if you have the top, absolute top teams, you get more viewership because people want to see the best, right? Yeah, but of course. It, I don't think it's going to kill the smaller tournaments. The small, the, like, the really small tournaments already have low viewership. It's just how it's going to be. Like, the, the interest has to be there. And um, I think in some ways, what the Masters will do is that they will, people will focus a lot on them, but I, I have this expectation that it won't kill out the others, really. Um, they're still going to be because, like, if it's four times a year, then the casual fans that just want to watch a few tournaments will watch those. What would they watch right now? They would definitely watch TI. They would probably watch ESL Frankfurt. They would probably watch the Star Ladder. They would watch DAC. So they would have like a few tournaments they would watch, but it wasn't like a, a very structured how they watch it. Now they're going to watch the Masters. The, the fans that want to uh, watch a lot of tournaments, it's just the same as now, basically. Yeah. Um, do you think that uh, this system that uh, Valve introduced will make the teams more stable? Yes. Because, Very short uh, answer. Like yes. uh, we we see for uh, for instance Navi mm -hmm. in the in the past six months or something like this they have changed like six or seven players. This won't be possible with the new system. So not if they want to play in the Masters at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I mean. That, yeah. That's what I mean because everybody, ev uh, all of the big teams, uh, Navi, Alliance, uh, EG, IG, and so on and so on. They won't drop out of these masters because uh, that's the price, uh, the price money. That's the viewership. That's uh, now what sponsors are looking are looking at. So it will um, it will make teams more stable. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So we, we agree here that uh, the new system is uh, is good. Yeah. Well, we we, I, yeah, we, we don't we have expect, so much information. We, we, yeah, we expect it to be good. I have high hopes. Yeah. yeah. We have high hopes for it, and uh, hopefully it will turn out uh, to be really good. So okay. Uh, next question is about TI. Mm -hmm. You know, TI uh, 4 was uh, one of the biggest uh, tournaments in uh, the esports history. Most probably, it was the biggest actually with uh, the, the biggest prize pool. I mean, but uh, this is because of the companion, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, what drove people to buy the companion was the items that you get, because uh, there were people with uh, 1,000 and above the level of the companion that uh, gave them 
like one, two, even three levels each game, so they have uh, they had a lot of items, a, a lot of item drops. Mm -hmm. Since Valve removed the item drops uh, when leveling up, do you think that this might affect uh, TI5, or they won't let this happen and will introduce something else that uh, will drive people to buy the new compendium, so they can increase the the price pool even more? They have a good idea, I think. Uh, they have a good idea. Yeah, do you so have any glimpse? Just I have no idea. You, you don't. I have no idea. They have yeah. a good idea. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, so the thing, like you said, TI4, they they found a really smart way of, of including the compendium there in comparison to TI3. Where it was also great, right? But it yeah, wasn't it the was same. Like The TI4 compendium was really outstanding. But I think Valve, considering this is the only big event, at least now, I, I don't know how their involvement is going to be in the Masters, but up until now, this has been Valve's event of the year, so they have quite a bit of time to invest into it. Uh, I think they put a lot of thought into it, and they get a good idea of how they can uh, create a compendium that's that's profitable, that makes for a great tournament, and of course is, is really good for themselves to uh, to make profit as a company. So if they don't do something with drops, they're going to do something else. And yeah. the compendium is going to feature some really cool stuff, I am 100% sure. I, I uh, hope it Whether will. the price pool gets increased even more than last year, or comparable, or... Uh, maybe a bit less. Like that's impossible to say. I, I don't want to be skeptical or something like this, but I don't really think that uh, in the next one two years we will see something like uh, TI4. I don't. I don't know why. I just have this feeling, and I don't say it in a bad way. Mm -hmm. No, TI4 was something special, something uh, unique for its time. But I really think that uh, uh, we have to improve a lot in another directions. Not. Uh, um, no, I don't want to say forcing, but uh, making a deal so good that people feel forced to buy the compendium. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, in yeah, in another directions. So I think that it will be uh, some time before we can reach the the same price pool with uh, um, with something like the compendium that people are okay. going to buy. What do you think, by the way, as we speak about compendiums? The, this question just popped in my head about the compendium of Dota 2 Asia Championship. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Like, it was uh, pretty good. Do you think yeah. that uh, uh, the rewards were motivating enough for the people to buy points to get uh, bigger levels of the Compendium? Uh, I think so. I think the main reason... So, if you want to do the one-to-one -one comparison, you could be like, why did DAC not get the same price pool as TI4? Like, if you want to look at it that way, yeah. then there's a couple of things that happen. So, first of all, TI is still TI. And there's going to be a lot more sales just because it's TI. For no other reason, it's TI you want the TI Compendium. Yes. Uh, Valve put in a lot more goodies in the TI Compendium than in the DAC one, which is perfectly fine, because TI is still supposed to be something special. How I'm imagining it is that DAC was kind of like, in a way, it's like a test of what, or it showcases what a master tournament could look like. Yeah. And I think uh, if, if, this, uh, if this prize pool we got for DAC becomes like the norm of the masters, that would be great. Like, we have... Then we would have three really big tournaments, and then TI would be still extremely big, right? Huge. But let's let's say you allocate a little bit. So let's say it's it's a quote unquote sacrifice. You sacrifice a little bit of TI force value, and you spread it into three other events. I think that would be great. Like let's say instead of a ten million dollar prize pool at TI five, we had like seven, and then we had three million dollar tournaments throughout the year instead the other masters. I, like if that was a trade off, if you suggested to me you could have one or the other, I would take that in a heartbeat. Like that, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. This is so. this is uh, this sounds so much better because. Uh, like you're you're giving you're giving people the teams, not people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I you you're, you're not uh, you're not getting the chance to anyone in the crowd to win uh, more money like this. But uh, you're getting teams a lot of different chances to win some money. Not uh, only one team to to win a huge amount of money like uh, uh, VG won the uh, uh, newbie. newbie. Newbie, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Like newbie won the big money in uh, TI4. What do you think about TI4, by the way, the tournament? What I think was it, was, it was a really good tournament. Unfortunately, people, as it often happens with tournaments, people remember the final play, yes, right? Yes. A lot of people don't follow the entirety of the tournament, and they watch, like, the grand finals. Like, the finals were disappointing, let's be honest. But that's just, you 100%. know... percent There are two things that decide, like, the, the quality of the finals. One is, how good is the game? Like, is the version great? Uh, I think uh, the version at TI4 was not the best we've had. I think, for example, if TI4 was to play right now, the finals would be more exciting, probably. Uh, so the version was not that uh, great. And then it's just luck. Like, what what teams, how are they playing right now? Uh, you can't plan for that as a tournament organizer. Like, TI3's Grand Finals is remembered. Like, everyone remembers Game 5 because it was completely amazing. But, <laughs> you know, if it was two other teams in the finals, it could have been maybe, like, 
maybe they wouldn't have been so good. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you, you just if you run enough tournaments, like sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. That's the that's how competition works. Um, if you look over the entirety of TI4, though, it had some really really good matches throughout uh, yeah, the round robin. Uh, the round robin was really, really nice. It was very exciting with the bubble race and the teams that went through. Newbie, if I, if, in case you forgot, they almost didn't make it even into yep, the playoffs, yep. and yeah, then they yeah, won yeah. the tournament. So, like the the structure, of it, it was a very exciting storyline. Um, but yeah, people people will remember the grand finals, and unfortunately, I guess not just the grand finals, but a couple of the games toward the end were very, very uh, one sided and very push oriented, which I think is really cool when it happens from time to time. It was just too much of the same. Yeah, yeah. and that's down to the version. That's pretty much the version where, uh, where that's what happened and things got changed and now we have a different kind of game. So I still think it was a great tournament. The finals of TI3 were probably one of the most memorable moments of Dota 2 in general. Yeah, TI4 of course. weren't, but it was, it was still a very, very good tournament. Uh, what do you think about the format? It was a different format than uh, TI3. Mm -hmm. Do you prefer the new format or the old format and why? Uh, I actually think so. They promised this year that every team will be playing on stage, and I think it's something very important. And there was the biggest flaw of the of the yeah. format of last season is for sure. Imagine you're, let's say you're an Alliance fan. You became a big fan of Alliance at TI3. They obviously did very well. Uh, I did. And you love the Alliance, and you you go there. You want to see your favorite team play on stage, and they don't make the playoffs. It's like, I bought a ticket. I traveled here. Uh, they obviously, I mean, that's just the fan perspective. Alliance themselves are obviously massively disappointed that they didn't make it, and it's a shame, right? But there's just something about playing on stage that I feel like every team that manages to get there deserve to be there and get the exposure, and they get to hear their fans cheering for them. That's just, like, for me, a basic part of the tournament that should be there. And it's coming this year, so that's good. Uh, so because of that, I didn't like the format last year because every team didn't get to play on stage. From a competitive standpoint, though, like the development of the tournament, I think was actually the bubble race was exciting. I feel like it was a pretty fair way of determining who got into the playoffs. Uh, the advantage for placing high in the round robin was also important. So, like, that was okay. I don't know what they're going to do this year because yeah, every team will be playing on stage and the event will be longer. But in comparison to TI3, I think the TI4 format was probably better. Uh, from for the competition, but not for fair. How to how to explain it? So for how, what teams got further? If if the only thing you care about is that the best teams get as far as possible, I think TF Force format was better. But when it comes to entertainment value and exposure for the teams and like just the atmosphere of the tournament, I think it was worse than TI. Yeah, I, I'm not sure uh, if it was uh, because of the the disappointing finals or something else or uh, the fact that not every team got to play on the main stage. But for me. The format of TI3 was uh, a little bit better, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoyed more uh, these two game series that they had in the uh, round robin. Yeah, the round robin. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and uh, rather than this best of one that uh, they had in TI, <coughs> TI4, excuse me. So we will see. We will see what uh, Valve will think. We will make up in the next TI. And uh, hopefully it will be some kind of mix between the two, and uh, we, they will take only the best of uh, both systems. Uh, I, I had another question that just popped in my head and I forgot it instantly. Oh my <laughs> it's okay. god, it's, it's terrible. Uh, anyway, what do you expect about this tournament? Who, who, who do you think is going to win it? Vichy Gaming. I think Vichy they're Gaming. the best team in the world right now. There's a reason they're in the grand finals already. Uh, yeah, I, I could go a little bit more into detail. I think their supports are incredible. Uh, they are sometimes a little have shown a little bit of weakness in drafting but I think they, they were really good yesterday against IG for example where they got destroyed in game 2 they immediately yeah. addressed the problem figured out how to fix it and ran them over in game 3 I, that's, I that's the mark to, of a strong team I only managed to catch game 2 by the way of the series mm -hmm. uh, did not manage to, <laughs> so, yeah. to, to, to see any so other games and, uh, game 2 was uh, actually amazing by the way uh, if you want to see some good uh, game of Dota watch game 2 of uh, IG between VG because it was some uh, interesting drafting, it was nice execution by IG, and uh, ultimately, yes, of course, we spoiled this uh, day one, but uh, still, it was a nice example of uh, how you can play, how you can um, surprise your opponents mm -hmm. with something uh, not so conventional. And if you want a very close game, watch game one. Watch game one, yeah. Game two and three were stomps, but in an interesting way. There was like really good strategic yeah. victories, but game one had like when it comes to back and forth and like clutch moments, it had the best play from both teams in the same game. Uh, so it was actually a really good series in general, even though actually, two of the games were stomps. Actually, all the games all from, the game. from uh, this tournament, they're all good. I have uh, watched most of the games, and uh, I didn't see any any game that is like meh, mm -hmm. just stupid game. No, watch all the games. I just remembered the question, by the way. Uh, we were talking about. 
every team playing on the main stage. This here, this uh, tournament here, I said this in previous interviews. Uh, I'm really disappointed about uh, this fact, and uh, I don't want to be disrespectful to the organizers. But I think that it's really unfair that one of conspiracy didn't have to play any games on the main stage uh, yes. uh, here on this tournament. Do you think that this could have been prevented, and uh, they could have? Uh, a chance could have been given to them to play on the main stage. Yeah, I think they should have. Uh, it was also like it was. I think it was in the cards that every team was going to play on the main yeah. stage. But I think what happened was that with IG's delayed flight, the scheduling had to be changed because the game IG needed to play couldn't be played in the time slot it was supposed to. And then things got switched around so that it could keep up with the schedule. And unfortunately for London Conspiracy, they didn't get to play on the main stage. I, I agree 100 percent though. I, yeah. It's the same. Like it's my ideology for TI5 as well, right? Every team should play on stage as they will. Same for this event. I think they should all be playing on the main. On the Again, main I don't know the reasons. I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody. It's just a suggestion. It's just something that uh, I feel should have been. Uh, it should. Uh, should have been given to to this team. Uh, does anyone, anyone in particular, like a team player or anything, surprise you here on this tournament? Um. I think the main surprise for me was Team Secret disappointing getting very low placement and uh, Team Tinker getting those top four, right? Yeah, they got yeah, top four. Yeah. So those are probably the two big surprises for me. I didn't think Team Tinker were going to make it so far. Arguably, they might have got a little bit lucky with the bracket. They got mm-hmm. to play... Um, what was it? They got to play London Conspiracy. Conspiracy yes. And then they played uh, Malaysia, which we thought were going to be really good after day one, but seemed to kind of fall off. But they I mean, so- no disrespect to Tinker anyway. I, th- I still think yeah, like, yeah, going into the tournament, if... Um, I think they can be happy with a fourth place. I think it's pretty good for them and, and getting a little bit of it's, momentum. It's a nice they have been looking so hard. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're uh, some, somehow of a new team with uh, all the changes they, they had, so uh, it's a nice experience for them to, to come to this one, to uh, bond together and uh, continue in the future mm-hmm. with even better results. Uh, what do you think was the main reason of uh, the poor... Um, the word. Performance? B- b- performance, yeah, of secret. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, I don't know, actually. It's kind of weird because some people said uh, jet lag, some people said some other stuff, but they didn't have jet lag. They flew from Istanbul. There's no jet lag, <laughs> so I, I don't believe that for a second. I think, I mean, sometimes you just have a, an off event for whatever reason, yeah, yeah. and maybe like anything I say now could be completely wrong. I think. The main thing that stood out to me was the game two against Alliance. I want to highlight this as one example where Team Secret are usually very intelligent when it comes to how to take objectives. And they actually lost the game to themselves to a large extent where they went for a Roshan that was actually risky. They ended up getting 6 0 in the fight. Sniper got a Rampage. Yep. And then later they try to get Roshan again. They don't manage. Uh, they end up conceding the Roshan as well as using a BKB charge and an RTZ for nothing. And, you know, those kind of mistakes from, from Secret just looked like they, they didn't have a really clear plan and didn't seem completely focused in their play, uh, whereas the other teams have been very, very much focused in, and united around what they wanted to do in the game. And game two even started better for, for them. They yeah, they were nice looking start. perfectly fine. That, yeah. that game looked like they were going to win it, and then they made that mistake, and then Alliance took over. So, I mean, it could be... It could be many things. It could be something external that we have no idea about. Yeah, Maybe yeah, they have some course. problems that you never know. We're uh, just speculating here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just seeing what I saw on the screen. I, th- I thought they were going to do well after day one against Malaysia, but yeah. apparently the reason... I, I felt both teams looked good, but then when you saw the other teams playing later on and, and how teams were beat, apparently they, they just weren't as good as we thought. Okay, what is the next tournament you're looking, looking for? Uh, the Summit. The Summit? Yeah. It should be good. Uh, are you going to attend it? Yes. Yes, nice. You're going to cast? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for this interview. Any, any last words to your fans, to your uh, friends, family, whatever? Uh, mainly just thanks to everyone who came to the event. I was very positively surprised with how big the audience is, how engaged people are with it, how much they love it. That's really great. And thanks to everyone for watching and, of course, supporting me personally. I, uh, for watching my stream, checking out my social media and all that stuff. It's, it's really great. All right. Okay. That's it, I think. Thank you for the interview. Okay.